Welcome to 15 Minute Fundamentals, where we break down crypto projects and learn about the drivers behind the data you see on our charts. Today, I'm joined by Julian Co from Ribbon Finance, a protocol that helps users access crypto structured products for DeFi. Hey, Julian, welcome to 15 Minute Fundamentals. It's great to have you on. Yo, what's up? I know th there's been a lot of interesting stuff happening at Ribbon over the past few months, so I'm really looking forward to diving in. And I thought uh, to kick off, it'd be great if you can just give a quick intro to Ribbon. Yeah, so um, Ribbon, like the sort of very short summary is Ribbon is the first and largest uh, structured product protocol in DeFi. So what that really means is that we use smart contracts to, uh, cr to sort of simplify and automate really complicated financial strategies for users. And our most popular like products are basically yield products on ETH, Bitcoin, and USD. Um, and yeah, un under the hood, it sort of uses like this pretty scary and complicated option strategy. But I think it, it, we, we sort of abstract all, all of that away for users. And uh, I know that uh, you just introduced Ribbon V3. And as, as far as I'm aware, I know that the biggest development between V1 and V2 was kind of removing certain points of centralization. Uh, could you quickly summarize what the biggest difference between V2 and V3 is? So v, V1 and V2, as you mentioned, is really um, the main difference was like centralization. Initially, we did a lot of like trades sort of manually and there were like humans involved and all this stuff. And we sort of abstracted a lot of that away and uh, automated a lot of that um, in V2. And V3 is sort of a very different focus. I think it's mostly on like capital efficiency. So we are adding more stuff around leverage and users are able to get more bang for their buck, um, as well as like a whole new revamped auction system. So um, basically how our products work is every week we sell like $200 million of, of puts and calls to market makers, to anyone in the world. And um, it is pretty difficult to sell like such size. Uh, like there's no order book you can just sell into or like an AMM that you can sell into. So we, we have like really spent the last like six months iterating on this auction mechanism. There's a bunch of interesting game theory around like how the market makers are, are playing this auction game, um, the different parameters we can tweak in the auction. So I think the main one, one of like the key focuses in V3 is like a whole new revamp auction system so that we can basically get the best execution possible, which basically translates directly to better yield for users. And also we're also doing a bunch of stuff which allows people to um, do way more asset support. So we're adding a bunch of new Oracle support, supporting long tail assets and so on. Um, I'd say those are like the main features. Um, so yeah, it's like a very different focus from V1 to V2. Yeah, got it. And I know like Ribbon's products can be as somewhat seen as complicated. So I'd love to kind of quickly break down the two main user facing products. So the Theta Vault and the Theta Vault Yearn. Uh, what are the kind of core features of these products and, and the innovation behind them? Yeah, so um, the, the first product, which we call like the Theta Vault, which is really just like a category of products. Uh, so there's like the ETH data vault, the Bitcoin data vault, uh, some altcoin data vaults as well, like Aave. And really how it works is um, if you look at like Compound or Aave or any of these large lending protocols, it, the, the rates for supplying your ETH is sort of like almost zero. So it's maybe something in the order of like 0.2% to 0.5% a year. Um, and I think a lot of crypto people are just not that happy with that. Maybe they're looking for something a bit more uh, on the risk spectrum to, to get much higher yield. So the, the main product that we have is basically you as a user, you deposit ETH into our contracts and our contracts will sell one call option against your ETH collateral, uh, which sort of just means that maybe if the price of ETH uh, is currently at $2,000, maybe we sell like a $2,500 call option and if the price of ETH sort of stays between this range, like 2K and 2.5K, you earn this premium for free. But if it sort of moons to like 3K by next week, you'll, you'll lose some of that ETH. So it's not like risk-free yield, but it's, um, it's sort of, I, I think, a much more interesting way for users to earn like a high yield product, which is really rooted in like financial engineering, not like any shitcoin printing. So um, just for reference, because we are sort of like selling risk, we are actually selling a call option 
against your ETH, um, the yield is sort of like somewhere in between like 0.3 to 0.5% a week. So um, maybe if you don't mind taking this risk for a few weeks, each week is like a whole year in compound. So I think that that's sort of like the, the difference in order of magnitude that people are interested in, um, which is why I think like the ETH data vault has been like one of the most popular products. Um, we, on the flip side, we have this other product. The, the first one sort of sells potential upside on ETH. We have another one that sells potential downside on ETH as well. So for example, um, if you are like bullish on ETH, you, you think like the merge is going to be like a super bullish event. Maybe you could, you could earn like free money by selling downside to someone else who is like worried about ETH tanking in the next few weeks. So, so that is like selling a put option. And because you're giving that person optionality, you also earn some yield for that. Um, so both products are like mirror of each other. One sells upside, one sells downside. Uh, and those two are like, those two sort of make up 80% of our TVL and they're like by far the most popular products. So right now I think our TVL is sitting between 150 mil to like 250 mil, depending on the day. Perfect. Thank you. And then like over, over to fundamentals, uh, you mentioned the TVL right now. Let's, let's start off with revenue. Could you walk me through your business model? So we understand how the cash flows through and to the protocol. Yeah. So the business model is extremely straightforward. Um, our vaults charge like a 2% flat fee, um, which we call like a management fee just for running the strategy. And the protocol also takes like a 10% haircut on all the yield that's generated. So, um, yeah, we have just structured it like a simple uh, fee structure that's like pretty popular with other protocols like Yearn. Um, and yeah, that's sort of the first fee structure we have proposed. And that is the one that we currently have. But these are parameters that can be tweaked over time, um, depending on market conditions, depending on how competitive the landscape becomes. Uh, but so far, it's still that same fee structure. Yeah, so we have the supply side revenue, which comes from the 2% management fee. And then the protocol revenue comes from a 10% cut that you take of all yield generated. And we can see that on our revenue share chart as the blue bar. And I want to speak a bit about the protocol revenue here, because about a month ago, you put out a pretty exciting announcement about a protocol revenue split. Uh, and I'd love to have you explain what this means and how it works and how it affects ribbon token holders. Yeah, so... Um that, that was like the high level business model and that's how the protocol generates revenue. I mean, uh, it, it's like pretty crazy to say that like a lot of DeFi projects don't generate any revenue at all. So even sort of like the blue chip protocols like Uniswap, like 0% of all the trading activity actually goes to protocol revenue um, because all of it just goes to LP. So I, I would say we are one of, I don't know, 20 or 30 uh, protocols that actually have some sort of revenue or business model. And part of that is basically once this revenue has been collected by the DAO, all, all, all the revenue goes to the DAO, by the way. Um, and once the revenue has been collected by the DAO, we basically can decide as like token holders can decide, okay, what do we do with the revenue? So um, as, as you mentioned, we did have a proposal maybe a month ago now, or maybe longer where half of all the protocol revenue gets sort of paid out to ribbon stakers, uh, ribbon lockers as we, is sort of the same thing, uh, which basically incentivizes people to lock their tokens um, to get like a cut of what the protocol is making. So it, it is pretty straightforward. I think it's sort of just half of all revenue goes to token holders. The other half sits in the treasury. And that's great. I mean, there's been a lot of talk around um unproductive assets in DeFi with tokens being purely governance related with no connection to real world cash flow. So it's, it's nice to see you guys putting it into practice. Yeah, I think we really, we really wanted like a reason for people to own, own the token uh, versus like some, some belief that in 20 years it'd be valuable or something. It sort of felt more comfortable trying to give it some value to it. Sure, makes sense. Now, just a more general question maybe on growth drivers, because I know the market 
uh, environment is not optimal for anyone, but Ribbon's been still showing some pretty solid kind of traction revenue wise ever since launch. Uh, could you walk us through kind of the main drivers behind this growth? And are you seeing any challenges right now? Yeah, so I think um, when, when we started the project like a year and a half ago, like the main or uh, the most important thing we we're focused on is this idea of like sustainable yield. So for the first year plus of the, the project, Almost like a, uh, till today, um, we never like gave out any tokens as incentives to users. There's like a real reason why users were on the platform, which was to earn like high yield against their ETH or Bitcoin or dollars. And on the other side, there's like a real market maker demand to buy these to- these options. Um, and yeah, because of that, I think we realized that we had a pretty sustainable business, even though the whole market is going away. Um we, we sort of think about it as like ri- ribbon yield would will never go away unless like the crypto options markets like go to zero. Like unless crypto options is not a thing anymore, uh, we, we'll still exist as long as crypto options as an industry survives. So that's how, that's sort of how our business operates. And that's where we think even in bear markets, like all these yield farms go to zero, a lot of like different projects which are paying out, I don't know, 10,000% APY incentives, they also go to zero, but we have like a pretty solid base, um, which is why I think revenue has continued to grow. Um, But I mean, obviously, like every other protocol, um, TVL has come down a bit. So I I think we peaked at maybe 350 million TVL. Now we're sitting at about half or 60% of that. A lot of that is really just a function of ETH and Bitcoin going down in value, but also I think some users are sort of scared and they just want to like take their crypto money and put it back into their bank or something. Um, but yeah, I think we like among other DeFi protocols, I think we have seen pretty um, okay uh, or pretty pretty good t- sticky TVL. Like a lot of projects have gone down maybe ninety plus percent, but we are down maybe thirty percent. So I, I am pretty happy with that. That's good to hear. Um, you you quickly mentioned token incentives. I know you've been focusing a lot on organic growth and haven't utilized those. But what what is the status right now? Are you using token incentives in any way? Yeah. So every um, we have like a very steady uh, small token incentive. I think it's on the order of like fifty to eighty thousand uh, dollars a week or every two weeks. I don't have the exact numbers off the top of my head. Um, I think we really just want to experiment with token incentives, how, how, how sticky it makes our users become. Um, and it's like a lever that we can turn up or turn down at any time. So we did turn it on maybe two months ago. We haven't really changed like the, the rate of emissions uh, since it, it is starting at a pretty low point. And I think maybe in, in the next bull market or next cycle or when the market comes back, this is like a very, very powerful lever that we can just turn up if we want to grow. Um, so that is like something available to us and we haven't really, we haven't really like uh, used use that bullet yet. Now, uh, I wanted to ask who the core users of Ribbon are right now. Is it is it more on the retail or institutional side? So it's definitely more on the retail side. I think I did an analysis maybe... Um, a few months ago where I think the median depositor on like our biggest vaults have somewhere in the range of like 10k to 20k uh, deposits per account. So I think um, a lot of our users are like medium sized DeFi DeFi users who have like uh, low five figures on Ribbon. Maybe they have low five figures somewhere else and so on. we, we have a few very large users, which are like in the millions of dollars. But as far as we know, they are not um, quote unquote institutional or they, they're not like big, big funds or anything like that. Are there any ways you expect uh, like use cases to grow that could kind of change this split? Yeah. So we have been working on this other business category, which we call Ribbon Treasury, which is basically we think like a lot of these um, DAOs are sitting on a shit ton of tokens, governance tokens that they don't want to like sell into the market and just dump. Uh, but they have like this cash flow issue where they don't have protocol revenue. 
they're sitting on a bunch of tokens that they can't sell. It's like pretty difficult to generate cash. So one thing that they can do instead is they can sell options against their governance tokens uh, that gives like cash today without selling a single token. Um, so that's like a narrative we've been working on recently. And um, we have like one, we have one customer already, uh, Perpetual Protocol, and we are working on get onboarding a few more DAOs. But I, I do think this is sort of like the type of institutional customer we might have. These guys would probably put in like seven figures at a time uh, and there will be like much more sticky capital and so on. So for now, it's sort of primarily retail driven, but we could see a shift of more of these types of larger customers in the next six months. And final question is what's next for Ribbon Finance? So anything that we haven't yet touched on that you can share about like the future roadmap? Yeah, so um, as you mentioned at the start, one, one thing we are working on is Ribbon V3. So that has like a bunch of new features. Um, we're also working on this new product category, which we think is very exciting. Uh, a bit of a teaser, but we're, we're probably going to call it like Ribbon Earn, which we think is like a much more like mass market appeal. Uh, it is not as niche as our current product. We think it'll be much more competitive for any user, uh, much more interesting for regular people uh, who don't know a thing or two about options. So that's something we are working on. Um, and also we are working on like another big secret project that will be revealed in maybe six months. Okay, yeah, looking forward. Uh, six months, that was a good teaser. <laughs> Everyone will have to follow you. Now to get that information first. Maybe, maybe, maybe three, I, I don't okay, know. Okay, good one. Put some, put some pressure on the team <laughs> shipping that. Now, if, if um, <laughs> viewers wanted to stay up to date with everything that's coming up, where would you guide them to follow you guys? Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Ribbon Finance or join our Discord. Um, but I think Twitter has like the most updated uh, news and, and so on. Or, I mean, go to Token Terminal and, and see the stats of how a protocol is doing revenue-wise, protocol revenue-wise, I think. It's a very compelling... Interesting fact, when, when we did like our latest fundraise, uh, basically our investor used the data from here to, to decide. So this was like the canonical place to, to get our, uh, our metrics, um, which was great. And I mean, I, I look at it all the time. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. That was all for today. This was a nice compact session, great overview on Ribbon. So thanks a lot, Julian, for doing this. It's great. Cool. Thank you very much.